My name's Sarah Fry, I'm the president of Fry Farms. And Fry Farms is the nation's largest grower of fresh pumpkins. And I just walked into different Division I Walmart stores and the different towns where I was already delivering fresh produce, spoke to the manager and basically sold them directly a lot of pumpkins. We were a small local farm and we still are. And we became a supplier that Walmart developed throughout the course of our history together. My mom was, I think, 22 years old when she came to the U.S. I came to this country 50 years ago with $40, and I speak very little English. Van Kitchen started very small. We are using hand rolling with nine people. I first connected with Walmart when I made a presentation in 1992. The best thing about working with Walmart is the opportunities that they give us and the support that they give us. It's a good time to be a woman in business, and I think now you see more women in business in general everywhere. My name is Ariella Balk, and I'm the CEO of AAI. At Walmart, under the Fruit of the Loom brand, the Smart and Sexy brand, as well as Private Label, we manage over a thousand SKUs in ladies' intimates, swimwear, and girls. A significant amount of our executives are women, and we have a lot of people that have been with us for over 15 years. What I love about dealing with Walmart is they've been an amazing partner, and I really mean partner. They always keep us on our toes. They're always challenging us. Even this last year, in working with our buyer, Michelle, her pushing us made us a better company. Good morning. My name's Charles Redfield, and I'm the Executive Vice President of Food for Walmart here in the U.S. And um, first, let me say, Chris, great session, right? It's just uh, amazing to see the lives and communities transformed in, in a country like India. So really nice job. And, and Deanna, what we want to do is we want to talk about next about a transformation, right? What transformation can be like when a company like Walmart can partner with women-owned businesses? And Deanna, we thought the best way to do that was actually just to hear directly from some of our best suppliers. That's right. Um, so, Charles, I'm Deanna Baker. I'm Senior Vice President in Apparel for Walmart U.S. And Charles is right. We're going to hear some great stories here while we're on the stage. Um, but first, I just want to say how proud I am uh, that Walmart, five years ago, made the commitment to sourcing $20 billion from women-owned suppliers in the U.S. Um, and as Doug said earlier, we've indeed made that goal. And that makes me very proud. Very proud. You know, it's such a win-win. There are now over, Charles, 11 million women-owned businesses in the U.S., and they generate over $1.6 trillion in revenue, and they do it through creating quality products that appeal directly to the needs of our customers, the majority of whom are women, so it makes total sense. Um, but to be no further ado, why don't you kick us off with the first question? You bet. You guys <laughs> met these wonderful young ladies on the video just a second ago, so let's hear from them, okay? Sarah, my first question's for you. Um, you know, as the, as the video talked about, you uh, you sell um, pumpkins, watermelons, vegetables uh, here in the U.S. And you have quite an amazing story. Doug talked about it just a second ago, and apparently you sell more watermelons than pumpkins. Um, <laughs> but it is it, it's a great story. Talk to us about how the relationship with Walmart took you from being a 19-year-old young lady selling produce out the back of your truck to now selling what you sell today and the volumes that you sell. Yeah. Good morning. Thank you um, for having me here today. It's um, definitely an honor to be able to participate in these events. I, uh, I think back to that time when I was very young and uh, doing business as a teenager with Walmart, and I think about all of the women that actually worked at the store level because that's how I that's how I started selling produce to Walmart. And most of the store associates that helped me unload melons or um, pumpkins or cantaloupes out of the back of the a pickup truck and a trailer were, were the female associates at Walmart. They were like the first ones out there pushing the carts or helping unload the product. Um, and our first buyer actually uh, that we negotiated a national contract with um, was a female buyer. Her name was Laura Marshall and she was based out of the Olney DC. But I think really the difference in the way um, we were able to do business 
with Walmart versus other retailers was the fact that we were able to, and in agriculture, this is especially important, we were able to negotiate long-term supply agreements. And when I say long-term, like 12 to 18 months is a long time in my business because we're in the fresh produce business and the markets fluctuate um, very rapidly with the changing seasons. And most retailers weren't doing that at that time. Um, and then, of course, Walmart was really leading the way. And then not only were they doing it, they were giving national contracts to a 19-year-old girl. <clears throat> but anyway, like, um, and so we were able to uh, we were able to really create the foundation um, of our business. We had some certainty in what we were doing, how we were going to grow, where we were going to grow. And now Fry Farms actually grows fresh fruits and vegetables in seven different states. And we operate um, farms and facilities across the U.S. Uh, farming upward now, growing upward now, 15 to 18,000 acres, and that's in fresh produce alone. Um, and then since then, um, throughout the partnership, we've actually been able to focus on um, CPG items and other ways that we can take up pieces of the value chain. And our buyers have, uh, throughout the years, have always worked with us in figuring out, okay, what's next? What's new? How can we innovate? So it, it could be something as simple as um, we're working on a project right now for pumpkin puree. Um, and how can we, and it's more of a sustainability. Um, I, you know, we had always kind of been thinking about crop utilization, but it wasn't until our Walmart buyer came to us and said, okay, what are we doing with all of those pumpkins left out in the field? Like the, all of those pumpkins that, you know, have a blemish or something that aren't going into the, um, into the fresh uh, division and produce, what can we do with them? Oh, okay, well, I guess Walmart does about six and a half million pies, so let's figure out a way to make pumpkin pie, right? Um, so it's either something as simple as that or something as simple as, you know, we're the nation's largest producer pr producer of watermelons. Um, how can you add value to the watermelon? Okay, all right, let's juice it and put it in a bottle. Watermelon has a lot of um, nutraceutical benefits. Nobody's putting it in a bottle. So now we're making watermelon juice as a beverage. So I would say, um, you know, the, it's, it was the foundation for me, really. It was the foundation of the business when I first started Fry Farms. And that partnership just allowed me to get that in place. And it was a very solid, it was a solid launch pad. And it helped me sort of um, be able to go out and, and do business in a different way with other retailers as well. So, um, and then the day, you know, I was about 22 when Walmart said, now you can cut POs yourself. And I'm like, really, I can cut a PO? And speaking of POs this morning, I remember thinking, now wait a minute, you're gonna give me access to your system and I get to go in and put in the price and tell you how many watermelons and cantaloupes you need and pumpkins you need? Yep, absolutely. So it was, those tools um, that were given to us, um, you know, as we were built, as I was building, as we were building the company, um, were, were really incredible. And I'm sitting here and I'm thinking that the largest retail company in the world is going to give me access to Retail Link and I get to go in there and I get to actually monitor my own inventories. This is really incredible. And then, and then once again, I'm like, okay, I'm 22 years old. What are they thinking? You know? So, um, but anyway, so long-winded answer to a short question. But. Yeah, but it's a good answer, right? Just reminds us of risk, right? The risk of both parts and stuff and what can happen with that. So I think it's just a fantastic, fantastic story and just, and look at the success you had now. So congratulations. Thank you. Teresa, yes. Teresa, President and CEO of Van's Kitchen. Egg rolls, that's what you do, right? Yes. Right. Yes, You've been doing business with us since the early 90s. And Doug, if I remember correctly, in the early 90s, we were growing pretty quickly. Right? We were growing pretty fast during that time. So talk to us about our relationship and how that's helped in the development of your company. Okay, thank you. Thank you again for um, allowing me to be here. It's such an honor. Um, we started working with Walmart. I made a presentation there. I think it was in the early 90s. Went up to Bentonville and back then Bentonville did not look anything like it did right now. No, it did not. Uh, it, you know, little one lane road and went up to the Walmart office and made a presentation and I was very fortunate that they decided they wanted to put our product into the deli department and at that time I really didn't know what I was getting into so I came back and told our, our company, told my parents that we had sold to Walmart and the first response was they don't sell food. So I think I said that to uh, Charles this morning and now we sell a lot of food at Walmart. Um, we were just fortunate to 
be with Walmart as the company was growing. We were growing and Walmart was growing, so we weren't really sure how to get started. And um, the company really helped us to figure out logistics. Um, you know, we're based in Dallas, Texas. How are we going to get our product to all these different stores? We sell egg rolls, which are frozen, so we weren't really sure how to get parts of our product everywhere. Um, I really had the fortunate um, experience of working with different buyers and mentors. Some of my buyers were women, some of them were men, but they really took me under my their wing and supported me and helped me to understand how to grow this business because it was all new to us. Um, you know, we were selling in grocery, but it was in a different grocery market. And so it was great to be able to have that opportunity to, to grow. Fantastic. Deanna? Great. Okay, so my question is for Ariella down there on the end. Ariella is president and CEO of Ariella and Associates, and she is responsible for many of the great items you'll find on Walmart's intimate apparel floor today. And you can find her products under the brands of Fruit of the Loom, Smart and Sexy, and No Boundaries. Um, so Ari Ariella, my question for you today is, what difference do you think women-owned suppliers bring to the table in business? Well, I think, <clears throat> thank you for having me here today, first of all. I think women-owned suppliers bring uh, three things, passion, over-delivery, and agility. So women-owned businesses, many that I know, are very passionate about their businesses, and they treat them almost as a child. And it's not about business hours, but it's a matter of working around the clock, and often the best ideas come at the off hours. And I think that passion makes a lot of women-owned businesses really wonderful businesses. And then the over-delivery, um, over I think still as women, we feel like we have something to prove. And I think our customers are beneficiaries of that because I think we do go over and beyond because we are so appreciative of the opportunity that's been given to us. And we always feel like we have to prove ourselves, which I think is a good thing. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing is agility. Many women-owned businesses are small businesses. I would consider myself a mid-sized business, but compared to Walmart, we're relatively small. And the relationships that a smaller mid-sized business can have with a Walmart, I've been doing business with Walmart for 18 years. I've been working with Fruit of the Loom, also a very large company, for 15 years. And there's a nice balance of a smaller and mid-sized company and the entrepreneurial spirit that we have working with with a large company and collaborating on things and getting things done. And we've had many examples of that in our years together. So I think those are some of the advantages. Definitely some advantages. And what I also know to be true about you is you're very passionate about helping other women along the way. Um, can you just give us an example or two of how you do that? Sure. Um, between phone calls, it's mostly phone calls, a lot of emails and sometimes texts that I'll get from a woman I'm mentoring half an hour before her Walmart meeting, one last quick question. Um, so a lot of it's over email and texts. Um, I'm probably mentoring four to six women at any given time. And um, in the advice that I give them is, one, don't grow too fast. It's very important to under promise and over deliver. So some of the new businesses that we've been fortunate to bring to Walmart over the years, I think one of the, the things that we've guided them in is not grow too fast and be very honest about how much you can take on. And your reputation is the most valuable thing you have, not the size of the PO. And a buyer will respect you if you say, I can only handle this much. Um, the next thing is to be ready and have a cushion. Whether it's in lead time or delivery or whether it's in financing, there's some Thing that will always go wrong. You can't spend your last dime and you can't take days out of the supply chain. You have to build in for the inevitable. Right. Things will happen and it's really important to build in that cushion. So when you create a, a P&L and a cash flow, you have to build in or a time in action. You have to build in for the fact that some things will go wrong. Um, so that's really important as well. That's great. And I think there's a common theme here because, Teresa, I heard that you're also very passionate about helping women. So can you give us an example of how you do that? Sure. Well, I think um, I'm very passionate about helping women, and I think as a person that um, is a daughter of an immigrant, I'm also just happy for the opportunity to do that. One of my major suppliers that supplies our corrugated is a woman-owned business that I met through WeBank. So that was a really great opportunity. 75% of my employees are women, so I always leave an open door policy and opportunity for people to come in and ask me questions. Um, I think I'm just like 
a lot of you guys, I'm a working mom, or gals, I'm a working mom, and there's a lot of challenges in being a working mom, and so I just like the opportunity to believe that if you persevere, and as Ariella said, you're always going to have something that's going to come up. If you just believe in yourself and continue to work through it, it'll it'll grow. I've had the opportunity to uh, mentor a lot of women that are starting businesses. And I think the first five years are the hardest. And I think as a woman, um, a lot of it is just believing in yourself. A lot of that bad self-talk can kind of get in the way. So if I continue to inspire somebody or at least they see that story and know that they can make it because there's going to be a lot of challenges along the way. I'm happy to do that. Thank you. Fantastic. Anybody surprised these ladies are successful? <laughs> Not really, right? Yeah. So we've got, listen, just about a minute left. So I've got one more question, Sarah. I think I'll give it to you. And I'll kind of piggyback off what you were talking about, Ariel, is, Sarah, what do you think other corporations should know about working with women-owned businesses? Um, I think that... Um, I. I think that we've made so many improvements. I remember that, you know, I did business with Walmart for about 10 or 15 years, maybe before they figured out that I, before Walmart figured out I was a woman. But I think that that was simply because, We're slow. you know, We're I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually think that was, that was simply because, you know, it was already woven, women's empowerment, um, economic empowerment has been woven into the fabric and the culture at Walmart for so long. Like, no one ever really thought about doing business with me as, okay, I'm, we're going to do business with a woman. No, we're going to do business with Sarah. It wasn't like a thing. You know, we weren't thinking about like that, <laughs> you know? So, um, but I think since then, other companies, we've um, done business with other companies, some of our raw ingredients, like Campbell Soup Company, um, and many other retailers um, that we do business with have dedicated more resources to bringing their women-owned businesses, their supplier partners to, to the forefront, and spending more time mentoring. So, I, I, I think that... Um, Within most retailers, uh, there is a uh, there's a division, and I think that it's all, it's very important to have that women-owned or minority supplier division within corporations, um, because sometimes these businesses they are you know they get to a certain size and they they need that little extra bit of help um, to push them to the next level or help them with scalability. And um, I, I have actually been a witness to um, several of those achievements throughout the year, not just with Walmart, but with other retailers as well, where um, those supplier diversity divisions within corporations have been very helpful. So I, I would I would suggest if, to other companies that if you're spending money on that and if you're hiring the personnel um, to do that, uh, there's, a, there's a ROI. Yeah, great Absolutely. advice. Thank yeah. you. Well, thank you to all of you, Sarah, Teresa, Ariella, and Charles. Um, we're appreciative of all these stories because we found through the last five years that what we've learned from the stories can be directly applied to other small suppliers. Um, so we can use those learnings to better our entire Walmart supplier community. Um, next up, we're going to hear from Walmart Senior Vice President.